Hey guys, I'm actually bringing you a real review this week. It is of a book that I have been super excited to read since I saw it, and it is The Star Touched Queen by Roshani Chokshi. And just look at it, first of all, it's so pretty. And then secondly, this top blurb up here, which you may not be able to read um, because it's kind of far away, is from Sarah J. Mass. And if you don't know, Sarah J. Mass is like my favorite author of the moment of all time potentially we'll see how that stacks up but if she blurbs something and likes it i have to pick it up and plus i've been on a mission lately to read less fantasy books set in like english settings so this was a perfect perfect choice for that the main character's name is Maya, and she is the daughter of a sultan who is at war with a bunch of other countries around him, and he hopes to get rid of this war issue by marrying his daughter off to one of these princes who is fighting him, and it does not go as planned. She ends up being chosen or choosing um because technically in her marriage ceremony she's supposed to have the choice but it ends up not really being her choice this guy named amar is the guy who says well if you marry me um i'll be able to save you because at her like choosing ceremony the whole place goes to things that is a four letter word that i shouldn't be using in these videos um she gets attacked, her, she thinks that her whole family is being killed, and this guy basically says that if you come with me, like, we'll be able to save them. And he ends up taking her away to this mystical, magical place called Akarin uh, through the Night Bazaar, and it's basically a whole new world where the fantastical is real, and of course there is some secrets along the way, he's not who he says he is. And it turns out that she is not who she thinks she is. But, anyways, the plot is beside the point. And here's why. This is a really confusing book plot-wise um, and character-wise. When you read this, it reads like a beautiful poem that you're trying to understand. And it's one of those things where if you, if you read poetry, you get that feeling where you're reading something and you know that it's beautiful and your heart's being tugged in a million directions and you're in love with the writing, but you get to the end and the meaning doesn't spell itself out to you. You have emotions and you have feelings, but the interpretation is muddled. And that's how I felt about this book. The writing in this book, in terms of lyricality, in terms of poetry and prose, is phenomenal. It is... I, I'm literally at loss for words to describe the level of writing in this book. Um, in terms of how pretty it is, in terms of how well this book puts together a plot, puts together characters that make sense and build there it fails a little bit because the poetry and the language doesn't come out into extremely connected prose and there is a lot going on in this book a lot of new magics to understand culture to understand and because it's so focused on the writing it doesn't allow that to really come forward in a way that's easily understandable. So sometimes you're reading something and it's very pretty, but you're just confused. And I felt that it was especially prevalent when you were thinking about the characters. The characters in here, I think, really needed more depth than they got. Like, I loved the characters. I loved Maya, for instance, but they just didn't get the attention and the the depth that they deserved um, because they were literally just existing in this very pretty poem that kept moving and that ended up making the plot feel subservient to the writing in the way that it also just felt like and then this happened and this happened to the characters as opposed to the character creating the plot and making choices. I really thought that Maya was going to be a stronger character than she was and that was upsetting because I really wanted to love her in that way as well but so it goes, you know, 
I think that this is her debut. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure that it is. And if that is the case, I tend to grade debuts on a different scale than I might grade a book for an established author. And this, if this is a debut, then it is a beautiful, sparkling debut that I'd put on par with A Fierce and Subtle Poison, which is a book that Bibliomancy for Beginners just did. And because, I mean, it's just beautiful. I, I That's a word I keep reusing, but I don't know how else to describe it. Um, if that is something that you value in writing, don't even think about it. Don't hesitate. Go pick this book up right now. If you want to focus more on plot than writing, I'm not sure how satisfying you'll find this. You definitely won't find it unsatisfying because there is enough to hold it together, but when you really start to interrogate the book and the choices of the characters and the characters themselves, they don't stand up really well just because of the lack of information given to you about them. So it's a push-pull kind of thing. This is the first in a series for sure. I do know that because I went and I looked and I added the next couple of books in the series to my TBR because again, if this is the first book that she's written, if this is the first book in the series, I am really confident that the level of writing can only uh, go up and maybe this series won't ever have the kind of plot that I look for in books, but I there is no way that someone who writes like she writes will ever write like a book that I won't enjoy at least for that purpose so I'm really excited to follow the rest of this series and her career and see where she goes because I'm excited. This is a book that is somehow even prettier than its cover on the inside in terms of writing so yeah that is my review of The Star Touched Queen by Rokshani Chowski. And like I said, if you love pretty writing, please go pick this up. Please just go do it. Don't even think about it. Just go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.